What's going on ladies and gents, boys and girls, guardians of all ages, Joker back again once again, and Bungie, well, they've delayed Shadowkeep from September 17th to October 1st. So what, like two weeks? In a few Twitter posts, Luke Smith stated, Shadowkeep would benefit from a little more time on the workbench, so we're going to take it. Shadowkeep and New Light will launch on October 1st, 2019. More details here. And then it takes you to a blog post. We'll get to the blog post in a moment, but Luke Smith had one more thing to say. I'm hoping to publish a state of the game, warning, likely very long, somewhat very nerdy, post next week looking at the last six months of learning from Destiny 2 and outlining the kind of changes we're making to the game in Shadowkeep and why. Then we have the important bits from the blog post, stating, here's some more date housekeeping. The world's first of the new raid, Garden of Salvation, will begin on Saturday, October 5th. It's a weekend raid race and contest will be active. We're extending Moments of Triumph through September 17th. You'll have three more weeks to complete this year's challenges and unlock all of the in-game and Bungie rewards. We're going to run an additional Iron Banner the week of September 17th as well. Cross Save will come online later this summer. You'll have time to sort out your friends list well ahead of Shadowkeep. Deej, the community manager, actually came out and clarified, saying that Cross Save will be available later this month, and we'll talk about it more next week. So, there's a lot to unpack here. While it is disappointing that the DLC has been moved back, I'm sorta of glad it was. First, this moves Shadowkeep away from Borderlands 3, which a huge cross-section of the Destiny community will be playing. Second, Destiny does not have the best engine out there. I don't think anybody's going to argue that, I don't think this is up for debate, I think we all are pretty much on the same page when it comes to Destiny's engine. Recently, they fixed a chest exploit in the Menagerie, and this had a knock-on effect in the Crucible of all places, where players wouldn't load properly. Sure, you could fix this by going into the menu and completing any bounties that you'd finished, but it was still a weird and annoying bug. Kind of goes back to that old joke, 99 bugs in the code, 99 bugs in the code, take one down, patch it around, 900 bugs in the code. And Destiny's kind of huge at this point. The load times have gotten rather ridiculous, and it's only going to get longer with each new piece of DLC kit-bashed to the original Destiny 2 framework. Basically what I'm saying is the more code you throw at something, the more something is likely to go wrong. And this isn't just a new DLC, this is a complete overhaul of the armor system from the ground up. A core system of the game is being majorly overhauled and changed. This is also Destiny First Light which is a whole new start to the game. This is cross-save. This is moving from Battle.net to Steam. Sometimes, there are just logistics that are completely and utterly unforeseeable. Bungie did just separate from Activision, and with that comes the loss of all of Activision's help. And personally, I would rather see the growing pains from that split on an expansion than on Destiny 3. Luke Smith also stated that he was going to do a detailed state of the game. And I'm really curious to see what he has to say about PvP, because PvP right now is a shit show. Everything from supers to weapon balance to bloom on console, PvP desperately needs looked at. I'm going to do a larger video on the state of PvP, but one of the issues that nobody seems to talk about in regards to PvP is how Bungie kept adding mechanics and buffing things without balancing it. For example, supers are a huge problem right now. They started in a bad place, but since Destiny 2's release, we've gotten Super Mods, 6v6, Masterwork Orb Generation, Super Refund Exotics, and even Bad Juju. Point is, Bungie kept stacking buffs and band-aids one on top of another, and by the time that they finally started peeling stuff back like Super Regeneration Exotics, it was already too late. It's still a huge problem. All the nerfing of Super Regeneration Exotics did was make it so you couldn't have supers back to back to back but you can still get them three to four times a game if you have the right mods, if your team's playing well, if there's enough orbs. It's insane. And some of the supers in and of themselves are just crazy. I'm looking at you, Bottom Tree Striker Titan, and part of the problem is the lack of the one and done shutdown super. Those supers that you throw out like Destiny 1 Titan Slam, that was just your god-given right to shut down any super you came across. We need to go back to more of that. But in lieu of that, because that would require an overhaul to the subclasses, what we need now, what they can do realistically, is put us somewhere between Destiny 2's initial release and now. Maybe find a very, very happy middle ground? That'd be cool. But we're getting way off topic. All of that said, not all of this news is disappointing. The World's First, for example, being on a weekend? That's amazing, that's what the Destiny community's been asking for for forever. 
and Cross Save will be releasing later this month. On top of that, and I know I've already talked about this a bit, but I'm really interested to see what Bungie's current opinion of the state of the game is. Because Destiny 2 has some issues, and the way that they've delivered content with the Season Pass, with no new Crucible maps, no new strikes, no vendor refreshes, stuff like that, it's an issue and it needs to be addressed. And I wonder how they feel about it and if they'll address that. But yeah, this is one of those things, not much to really comment on. Shadowkeep got moved back. What can you do? If it comes out and it's polished, then hey, cool. If it comes out and it's lacking polish after they pushed it back, well, we'll address that in the review. But I would rather the game be pushed back than have another anthem. Also, didn't you guys hear? Moon's Haunted. So, of course October's the best time to release Shadowkeep. But hey, those are just my thoughts, let me know yours in the comments below, and like always, stay frosty.